welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear. I am a reader and a writer. And today I am here to talk about A Spindle Splintered by Alex E. Harrow, which came out either at the beginning of October, the end of September. I can't quite remember. I was really interested in reading this because my favorite Disney movie growing up was Sleeping Beauty and having a play on that seemed very interesting. And so following the author's own words, this is taking the fairy tales and putting them in a spider-verse. Alternate realities, multiple universes, that sort of setup. I'm not sure if I have any thoughts at this moment that would be considered spoilers, so I'm just going to talk and in editing, I will put all my non-spoiler comments first, and if I that, 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 and if I have any spoiler comments, then I'll move them afterwards, and then if not, there will just be an outro with my final thoughts. So this book follows Zania and Gray, who has a disease which means that she is most likely not going to live to see her 22nd birthday and today is her 21st. She has grown up with this disease and it's just a part of her life. But she also is really into the Sleeping Beauty mythology, majored in it in school. And this is where I found it very interesting. She talked, Zinnia Gray talks about only the dying girls like the Sleeping Beauty story. And I'm not dying, but I've always liked the Sleeping Beauty story. This book does not shy away from the ugly elements in the Sleeping Beauty story, which was actually how it started before Disney got a hold of it. Another reason why I was so interested in this is I remember reading the French version in my high school French class and just, yeah, that was a good, I think that was a good middle ground from Disney to the more darker elements. This book does a really great job of looking at all of the Sleeping Beauty myths and even plays into how that base story is used in more modern day fiction. Like I said, it's Zinnia and Gray's 21st birthday. She's hanging out with her family and everybody knows that probably within a year she's going to be dead so everyone's trying to make it really special and she's feeling a little suffocated. And then her best friend Charm calls her up and invites her to a party at this abandoned asylum tower, complete with a spinning wheel and Sleeping Beauty decorations. And at the end of the night, she decides to touch the spindle and falls into another version of the Sleeping Beauty story. So this book is a novella. It's not very long. When I heard the concept, I thought it was gonna be longer. I thought this was a novel. And then when I got it, I was like, oh, it's a novella. Sweet. Okay. And it works fine. I think it could have been longer, but I think that what we got was to the point and it gave us what we needed. There's no extra fluff in this book. I like the characters in this book, especially as you enter this other kingdom and meet the Princess Primrose and it gives you a certain vibe. And instead of making a character, instead of making a character of this setting, it peeled back layers and showed how just because the icing or the, just because the first look of this kingdom and this Sleeping Beauty story looked a certain way, didn't mean that people weren't more complex and had different desires and issues in their background. Something I think Hera did a really great job was weaving Zinnia's world into Primrose's world and how there was overlap. I don't think this is a spoiler because this happens pretty quick in the book, but Zinnia is able to still text her friend Charm when she goes into Primrose's world. And I thought that was an interesting element that no matter where Zinnia is, she's still connected to her world. I love the illustrations in this. Um, here's an example of one. And it doesn't necessarily give too much away what's going on, but it has a very dark kind of vibe at the same time as being whimsical. 
and it's little things throughout. Like here's a darker one kind of thing. But yeah, really enjoyed it. I don't have any spoilery thoughts on this. I really enjoyed it and I gave it five stars. It wasn't perfect, but I definitely want to reread this and it makes me want to go back and reread all the other stories about Sleeping Beauty throughout time. And I'm very excited that this is going to be part of a series and we're going to have a second book coming out next year as well. If you haven't read this yet and you like twists on fairy tales and you liked the whole Spider-Verse multiverse concept, pick it up. If you have read this, please let me know what your thoughts were. I would love to hear them. Thank you and have a great day.